your boy sweatshirt from heaven back on another video and um I, I don't really know what to say you know i had to figure out some kind of way of creating content for this um this is actually pretty cool i made myself far and they tell me when i'm recording now so i have to like check to see if i'm recording obs because that yeah i can't tell you how many videos just went to the trash can because i didn't record the audio uh but anyway i had to find a way to put some more old content out there i've wanted to do it in the past two singles uh i'm not gonna cover that here too thoroughly until i get to the the uh sick uh part of this but um sick came out uh, let's do it once uh and i don't like to do um uh, sensationalism or anything like that and if i did not think this was a good project i wouldn't even do this so hit hit um i'm doing this because i do think it's a good project kind of just want to show people they know for first impression how impressive a project this is um so with no further ado i'm gonna one take this i'm not gonna edit it i'm just gonna put it out there uh it should be pretty short so off rip starting from beginning to uh to the end and i'm going to start with the first oral project that i know of that is this that i listen to uh slide tendencies i still thoroughly enjoy this tape like i can still listen to this tape and still thoroughly enjoy the lyricism of this Earl. And when I tell people this, they think that, I mean, there's like a clear divide with both Tyler and Earl and some of their fan bases. And there's like a subsection that came after the Odd Future stuff that came from the pretty much massively depressed uh, stuff, to keep it bluntly. Uh, the, the solace and uh, I don't like shit. And, and I think those people really don't understand that this guy was pretty much hot to come out with because of his technical skills and that's when i listened to him not to be like a gatekeeper but like i was impressed by his technical skills and that's the first impression i have of him so because of that i'm going to always hold this to a certain standard that um you know may be uh blind to the subtle musician impressions that earl uh, uh progressions that earl has had as a musician uh especially in, in like crafting a track list um just all the other stuff that doesn't really speak to just rapping uh but it's a long way way of saying that i still love this project because it is that good at rapping for a you know at moments 13 to 16 year old artist you know i think there's a few years where this the songs of here range from but pretty much under a 16 year old for the most part on this project and it's lyrically incredible and speaking to being 16 year olds and making incredible stuff i still i would honestly say that earl the tape has rated progressed lower for me than slide tendencies because slide tendencies doesn't reach into the uh the horror core bag really at all uh it's just a mother effort rapping let me try to refrain from cursing we'll sell on that list um a dude rapping and then slide tennis i mean earl sweatshirt on earl uh it becomes more of like the whole kind of horrorcore thing they've been doing uh topically uh and there's also some other themes obviously throughout a was i believe a 10 track uh play uh track list but i think that that kind of wears it down for a lot of people and it does the same for bastard too um for some people it's just that stuff when you get older just is less engaging or interesting um so going from there i don't know because i do well i guess you'll see um going to the next project 2013 doors um i'm going to put that here i'm, I'm iffy on this one i because this this is pretty much the last odd feature era project and doesn't contain as much as under wave horror core but it is you know still that you know that smell is on it right um and thematically like i think it's you start sinking more into the like life experience by earl sweatshirt uh i think some of his best and deepest songs in his track list or his discography are still on this project charm is still an incredibly deep song um I think I forgot the one that was primarily about his grandma. I want to say it was horse, but uh, there was one that was pretty much about his his grandmother, uh, you know, in her last days, and that was a really good one too. 
but there's still some like the rappy rap tracks like uh Uncle Al, uh Whoa that I love. I think it's pretty much the up until sick. I thought I thought it was pretty much the best blend between uh the Earl we have now and and former Earl. If that makes sense. But I'm gonna put it here and I'm going to think about because there are some songs I usually like don't return to. Sunday does nothing for me, even though it is when it has better track subject matter wise to that point in discography. Um that does that do anything for me. Uh the the song with Mac Miller, I just for whatever reason I think it's Guild. I've never voted against that song, uh honestly speaking. And I kind of pre I don't really listen to pre very much. There's a few songs over here that I just don't return to in any faction. So may have to may have to revisit this uh placement. But for now I think I'm I think I'm gonna be here. This is where I'm at currently. Uh let's see so I'm going to 2015. I don't like shit. I, you know, for me, th this is, I, I feel like if I put it here, a lot of people would be pissed watching this video, but I really don't like, I don't like shit. I mean, not to say I don't think it's a good project. I think it's probably a good seven, seven and a half ish. But the thing that it and the other uh, project came in 2015 from Earl suffer from is that it just came out at a point where I was not of a maturity to appreciate the subject matter on it like it's not to say it's bad because it's a bad project but or that i would put it lowly because it's a bad project but it's just i could not appreciate what puts some rap songs up so high for a lot of people is that they could appreciate the subject matter and that allows them to defend some of the uh sonic choices that earl goes into as he kind of gets that slum sound a little bit uh so it's going to be about how much you can, and that's, I think just about every Earl album at this point, how much can you engage with what's being said uh, in a blunt way? Like, the layers of lyricism kind of start getting peeled away uh, from I don't like shit going further on, and it's just really about how much you like what's being said, or how much you can engage with it. And I, at that age, I think I was like 26, I think I was 16 in 2015 uh, when this came out, so I just couldn't it wasn't like it wasn't a fun time. Let's just say that it wasn't a very fun time. It wasn't like rappy rap tracks. It wasn't. It's was just a blunt way of a man living. And I think if I was able to listen to that for the first time, you know, like now, I would probably engage with it a lot differently because I've experienced a lot more life. But just in 2015, I was unable to really uh, engage with this for the first impressions. And even though I think I listened to it again, like I think last year, um, I want to say the last year, the year before. I, I still couldn't really, I, it's just a barrier, like a, a bridge I was crossing. I just can't really get back into the, and Solace, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I've, I've never been a Solace fan. I kind of set it up with, with the whole spiel there, but it's a great project. It's an amazing project, but like, I just, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry, but like, I, I, I can't get into it. Um, yeah, yeah. Some rap songs, my most played album statistically ever uh it's i think it's like a like 400 scrobbles which last fm like 400 scrobbles ahead of the nets project in my uh my last fm and it's probably not my most played album ever because i didn't use last fm until like 2014 but um that's something about earl like I, I really think that when he drops a project that i enjoy i have to digest it earl uh the subtitle was the same way doris i played quite a bit uh and most of that will never be Catherine too because that was before 2014 as well but um those two i played a hell of a lot of it's just something like if he drops a good project i just i'm there i'm there for it if he drops good music i'm there for it. i played home a lot i played uh uh the super rich kids verse a lot i played all of this shit that's kind of just flying out flying around there uh warlord leather uh great alchemist beat i hope that Action Bronson, they're doing a, a, a tour, Action Bronson, Earl, and Alchemist. I hope that World War Leather in some format gets onto streaming services because that is a good-ass song that, that I feel like should not just be hanging around in YouTube and SoundCloud forever. Um, so, yeah, I, they make good music. Uh, they also, I think, the Domo Genesis uh, No Idols tape, I believe that was a, a Domo Genesis and Alchemist exclusive thing and Earl and I, I'm going off to a different tangent but anyway when he makes good music I enjoy good music some rap songs are good as album I enjoy from front to back there's 
virtually no skips. I I can do without Lucy. Um, it's not the best song ever to me. Uh, and also like I don't know, I mean, I pretty much the last two talk, uh, tracks I pretty much just kind of skip over. Like it's it's not like they're not good songs, but it's just like those are very heavy songs. I just don't see the, the need to really revisit too much. Like those aren't like banging the whip songs. Those are like let's keep it moving. Uh, Eclipse to me is pretty much the I think it's Eclipse, right? It's um. Lucy, Azucar, and then Eclipse. No, there's Veins. I think Veins is after Eclipse. Right? I feel like it's Veins before Eclipse. But anyway, um, I pretty much end with Eclipse. That's about where I... And some of the songs, like I said, some of the songs that are on here that I like, I played a fucking ton of. Um, Red Water, I think, is my second most played song on last FM. Um... Just so, you know, esoteric. I mean, it's, it's an amazing uh, amazing song. Um, Cold Water. No, is that not Cold Water? Cold Summers. Cold Summers is a good one. Uh, Eclipse, like I said. Uh, Eclipse is maybe, like, one of my favorite songs out there. Azucar could be in that, that tier, too. December 24th, just, like, the first... Well, I guess Cold Summers is a structured track. But I think December 24th is probably the most... Like, people hear this, they think, like, this is why I thought I had an Earl song. I feel like the first three are kind of this is the new Earl. Like this is where he transitioned to at that period of time. And then December twenty fourth is like a grounded foundation you kind of get for a second. And it goes back into shifting with stuff like the uh the, the bank and uh the mint and you know is it the bank? I know it's the mint. The bins. The bins and the mint. Yeah. The mint and then the bins and then kind of goes a little bit it just keeps on shifting kind of stuff. But to me that's still an incredible song. Uh incredible album, I should say. Um, Feet of Clay. I know this is a 2019 cover. Uh, I mean, I can speak to the, the. I mean, literally, it's two more songs on the uh, 2020 re release. I understand why some of the people who really enjoy the lo fi Earl of that time, the 2017, 18, 19, I see why they enjoy this project as they do. To me, there's songs that individually I love. Like, I individually love Tiz Tiz. I love, um, I mean, you gotta like El Toro Combo Meal. I mean, that, Mavi, like, that's pretty much his introduction to most people. Uh, incredible standout performance. Uh, East, I actually, like, unironically enjoy East. I'll probably say that, for the most part, I enjoy the songs off here, individually speaking. But just this EP as a whole just does, like, it's hard because, like, how do you enjoy individual tracks off a project but you don't enjoy the project itself? I, I just, I don't. Like, I don't, I don't want to, even though it's short, I don't want to sit there and listen to this for the most part. And also the song My Comedy disappointed me because I, this came out, like, the the the, um, the My Comedy song, which I believe was on the uh, second edition. I could be wrong about that. But the second edition had the My Comedy joint. That disappointed me because I thought it was going to be, like, no, no, not the My Comedy one. The, the, um, the Matzo one. My comedy is doing things for him, though, as I recall. Like, he doesn't, he didn't do anything for me. I could look at the lyrics. I'm trying to remember as best I can if there's anything he, I just don't remember him doing anything that impressed me off of there. And I like started getting into my comedy um, around 2020, and like I came back to that track, and I was like, there's nothing that, that happens here for me. Let me see. Oh yeah, I forgot you can't put my comedy. <laughs> well, you can't put my comedy lyrics on. <laughs> Yeah, my copy is such a dick for this shit. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just I wasn't impressed with the Mark Homie joint. I think like re listening that verse maybe, but um uh, seventy four, I think it's the intro track. I don't have any memory of that. Um M Tomb, I don't have any memory of that for real. O D no. But El Toro Combo Mill, Tisk Tisk, and East. I, I love those ones. I don't know. I really don't know what to say. Maybe I should revisit this and try to see if I could maybe make myself like this. I don't know. But I also had no really recollection of a uh, ghost in the whole world either. Like, I was like, I like Masso a lot in 2019, so I was looking forward to that. And I always came out 2020, so I wanted wanted to see what to make out of that. But I don't know. It just it just seems forgettable to me. I could go back and probably you know listen to it again, but um, I, I just wasn't I wasn't impressed by this. Uh, and then kind of closing it off. Oh yeah, I didn't place it. Uh, I can't say it's ass because like. As you can tell from that deduction, like, to some of these songs, I just, I have memories of some of these songs, I'm just like, I don't really have any thought about. 
Uh, I did listen to this a few times, so that's just just kind of went through one ear or the other. Um, I, I really, I mean, when I say don't rate, it's just because of like, like the Toronto sling. I just, I don't rate this. Like, it's, it's it just is this. Um, how, how far are we doing this? 15 minutes? All right. So, sick. Um, that's where I'm at with it. It's not better than SRS than me off the first listen, but I will say, I will easily admit that I did not uh, really digest the lyrics much on the non-single tracks. Um, outside of, uh, what was it, uh, was it God's Light? Hold on, let me, let me look at the track list on that. I, it was, it was God something. Let me, let me, blah, 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 blah. God Laughs. Yeah, God Laughs. He had a bar about his grandfather knowing 13 languages and he still couldn't say anything to him. That was like the heaviest bar I think I've heard in a while from like anybody. Like that was incredibly deep. Um and for the most part, like me putting this this high is like just off the strength of how well it's mixed and produced. Like it's seamless mixing. Apparently Guru, who's done a lot of Jay Z joints, if you know Jay Z. Um, he mixed this through through and through from what I was told on Twitter. Um the production, there's like Alchemist production on him, I'm pretty sure. There's Black Noise, he does a lot of this. Um, that's at the ballpark, in my opinion. Uh, Theravada, who's that? I don't know who that is. Um, Sam I Am, I know he's a lo fi dude that's uh, been producing for a while. And then there's uh, Navy Blue joint. Uh, so Navy Blue goes by Ancestry, does producers. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, I really think it's. A good ass album just off of the the back. Man, maybe this is just this is me showing maturation as a listener of music. Like I didn't even listen to the lyrics, and it's still an incredible project to me, based off the strength of how much goes into, um, into the 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 creating a scene. I mean, the the sample usage here is fantastic. You can create an entire movie off the of sample usage, and then what makes this really pop. Um, we have some of the thematics kind of shown on the, uh, the cover, uh, it kind of speaks into like, you know, kind of African traditions in a sense with, with the, well, not African traditions, but like, you know, uh, I, I don't really know what correct usage to say. I'll just say African traditions, I guess, but like warding off demons, uh, bad spirits, vibes, uh, his, his parent, his father was from Africa, um, a poet actually. And he kind of has pictures of, to me, what seems like some imagery of what I guess his father would have experienced or what would have been in his father's area. Uh, and then, obviously, the mask, the pills. Uh, there's a bar about syringes that I guess kind of speak to maybe a maybe an anti-vax uh, sense. I'm not sure. But um, he kind of really touches on some deep stuff that is like almost of a nature that is uh, existential and, and uh, spiritual uh, with, with some of the thematics here, like, I have to really listen to the lyrics more to kind of see if that ties into the backdrop being, being painted here, so to speak. But uh, I thought it was a good. I thought this was great. I mean, I I thoroughly enjoyed this project. For it to really reach past, um, like, Pitchfork gave it an eight. When I was listening to it, and I get tell somebody my rating like last night. I said eight just off first impressions. For it to really reach like a nine. You know, or just higher than where it's at, which is a definitive step below the SRS. I'd really have to like be blown away with the lyrics, lyric content off of this. Um, and I, you know, that's possible. Like, I, I'm not trying to derive any kind of set conclusion on this yet because it's just not something you can do off of one listen. But I mean, it's it's cinematic. Um, it really is like the, the the instrumentals, the mixing, the outro to a uh, fire in the hole. I mean, that was kind of like this little piano ballad, you know, just someone really going crazy on, on the pianos there. I enjoyed it. Uh, I actually want to find out. I, I like he has content relating to shots related to all that, and uh, there was a bar about it, and I, I just I really wish I could find it. I don't. Um, I could probably go on Twitter and find it, but I'll just end it there. This is where I'm at on it. Um, 
I think for me, this is pretty close to where I feel at. Really, I could I could do something like this, and then probably feel okay. like I'd be able to sleep at night doing knowing I did this. But I know some people would not enjoy that I did that. I'm sorry, like I I just don't. I'm not of the opinion that just because it had the cringy horrorcore stuff that it means it's necessarily a bad project. It's you can't revisit. Like if you can't revisit Bastard, for example, some of the the sample flips off of there, some of the emotion uh, or it, like just wreckage that is being displayed by i think charlie was like 17 when he made that album i mean there's things to appreciate there and same way you could appreciate nas on illmatic that was like 17 18 you know just impressive talent at a youthful stage to me is still impressive no matter how far removed from it even though there's some crazy shit on there you know i don't know but if you did have this in a higher tier than those these projects which i'm sure many people do probably most people do I'm not gonna be mad at you. Like I can see why, but that's it for me. Um, hope you enjoy, and uh, hopefully I get my key binds right. I'm gonna try it.